Doesn't the dome room look great? Isn't this a wonderful gathering of people? Hello, my name is Sarah Welch, and I'm the Acting Personnel Director. It's a privilege for me today to be the MC for this, the second annual Diversity Awards Ceremony. Before we get started, I want to recognize a couple of uh, elected officials, city council members who've joined us, and I can tell you frankly that I've tried to scan the audience, and, and maybe there are others of you out there. Um, Sue Donaldson and Jim Street have joined us for today's event, so hi to you. joining us. Any council members uh, or elected officials I missed? Thank you. Um, but I'm going to make some opening remarks um, and we expect to be joined by uh, Norm Rice later today uh, for the presentations. In marking the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it's fitting to begin our celebrations by recognizing city employees whose actions and deeds bring Dr. King's dream of life to life by hosting Pieces of the Dream, the theme for this year's second annual Diversity Awards event. I need to tell you that as in last year, our first Diversity Awards event, we were simply blown away by the magnitude and the diversity of the presentations of the awards that were presented to us for evaluation. We were absolutely awed by the comments and the content of the statements that the nominees made about all of you who are gathered here today. It really made me think how lucky I am and how lucky we all are to work in a city where respecting the rich diversity of our workforce is valued and cherished. Indeed, diversity is our friend and diversity is our strength, and I'm very proud to be here today. Therefore, it's fitting that we honor the heart and soul of Seattle's diversity its city employees who have demonstrated leadership and innovation in valuing and managing diversity. Today we continue a tradition that we started just last year, but it feels like a tradition. We're hosting our second annual Diversity Awards ceremony. I'd like to take a minute to talk about the awards and the nominations before introducing our nominees. In general, when we asked for nominations for diversity awards. We were looking for individuals or groups who've gone many extra miles and exhibited innovation, leadership, and creativity in valuing and managing diversity. We assembled a committee of peers, a committee of city employees from various city departments who would review the nominations and would make recommendations which were then forwarded to the mayor's office. We were especially interested in identifying individuals for whom diversity is not just part of the job, but who willingly went the extra mile and took extra measures to include diversity activities and initiatives into their workplace. And you represent those people who are nominated for those awards. Diversity may come from unlikely sources, you might say, from all of the city employees' workforce. The committee made recommendations then into two categories, certificates and plaques. The certificates represent honorable mentions, employees or groups who distinguish themselves by an action or deed. The plaques represent standouts, people and employees or groups who have demonstrated real leadership and excellence in diversity. So as we go through, uh, we'll present these nominees to you. I need to tell you that the distinctions between those two was very hard. Um, and what we're really here about is recognizing the diversity and the efforts of all of you. The recipients are as diverse a group as is the city. One thing's for sure. Um, their actions and their deeds will move us and will inspire us as we go forward. Now it's my honor to introduce a new member to the city family. Uh, Bruce Brooks has joined us as Deputy Mayor and will present uh, some remarks and participate with me in presenting some of the awards. Bruce? Thank you. I I'm not sure whether I really should be doing this since I haven't had my employee orientation yet. <laughs> but I've been promised it's coming and I'm really looking forward to it. 
Thank you, Sarah. And I want to also thank the personnel department employee development team uh, for its efforts in bringing this together today. And in particular, I want to thank Joanne Anton uh, for her efforts and hard work in organizing this event. And perhaps more importantly, I want to thank today's deserving nominees who make these uh, awards possible. As Sarah mentioned, I am uh, going to be one of the new deputy mayors. And uh, as such, I get the opportunity occasionally to stand in for the mayor. And Mayor Rice sends his regrets and he does hope to join us uh, shortly. He presently is attending the funeral of Lieutenant Walter Kilgore, one of the four Seattle firefighters who died tragically last week. So he asked me to come here today as his representative to communicate to you, how all of you, how proud he is of each of today's recipients whose actions and deeds honor Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. As Sarah said, this ceremony is a fitting way to begin our commemoration of the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., which is Monday the 16th. And I suspect that many of us have been thinking about him a lot lately. President Clinton, about a year ago, gave a speech, a speech at the same church at which Dr. King gave his last great speech, in which he described how he had seen over the mountaintop. In that speech, President Clinton reflected on the subject of heroes as those who give their all for their community. The mayor has asked today that we dedicate this ceremony to the memory of the four heroes who paid the ultimate price and service to their community, the four firefighters of the Seattle Fire Department. I know I speak for all of us when I say that they and their families are in our thoughts and in our prayers. So I'd ask you to join me in a moment of silence in honor of James Brown, Walter Kilgore, Gregory Shoemaker, and Randall Tur Turlicker. that President Clinton mentioned in that speech and I think is useful for us today is he was wondering what kind of report card Dr. King would give us for the last 25 years if he were alive today. President Clinton observed that Dr. King probably would say, well, you, you did a good job electing people who formerly were not electable because of the color of their skin or for some other reason that people uh, discriminated against, so therefore you have more political power. He may also have said you did a good job elevating people of color into the United States Army, into the very top ranks of government, and in general he did a good job of opening opportunity for all. But perhaps that report card would be marked incomplete. For the President closed his speech by saying that there's still work to do, and he said, and I quote, let me ask all of you to say that we will honor the life and work of Martin Luther King Jr. by action and by deed. So how do we do that? Again, why don't we go back to a, a great source, which is Dr. King himself. For Dr. King once said, every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or the darkness of destructive selfishness. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Today, we celebrate what it means to embrace and reward diversity. We also seek to renew our commitment to make real the vision of a workforce and a workplace that sees beyond race, gender, disability, sexual orientation, ethnicity, creed, and any of the other lines that some would use to divide us from each other. With that in mind, and on behalf of the Mayor of Seattle, it is my pleasure to recognize those city employees today who have answered Dr. King's call to consider what they are doing for others. Thank you. Now before we begin with the individual certificates, let me uh, 
we love process in the city, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> let, let me give you a little process here. Uh, see, I'm, I'm a quick learner. I've learned that already in a week. Process is important. <laughs> Many departments for these individual certificates have more than one recipient. So in the interest of time, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about each person within that department that's receiving an individual certificate, and then I'll ask them to all come forward as a group. Would you please hold your applause until the end of each grouping? The dilemma now. What do I do? Must be a process. Do I proceed? Or do I turn it over? <laughs> My job is even harder than Bruce's because I don't even know where he is on the agenda. <laughs> I am really very much committed to being here and sharing uh, this afternoon with you. And uh, you know, it's been a difficult day. Uh, it's one that uh, challenges us all. A uh, great deal of humanity, a great deal of compassion was uh, reached out to the families of our fallen heroes. And I'm very proud of the city and the way that it's come together to give compassion and solace to the family and today to say goodbye and also to extend our support for those men who have died and also for those families who need uh, comfort. But I'm also very proud to be here today because, you know, last year I had the flu and I couldn't make it and I really wanted to and so I made sure that everything I could do, my schedule would be arranged so I could be here and I was determined to stay healthy and I was determined to make sure that I could be here and, and honor uh, the good words of diversity, the good words of Dr. Martin Luther King. And perhaps maybe in this time of tragedy, when somehow humanity rises to the occasion, we can take something from what we learn about all the way this community comes together when tragedy erases gender, Tragedy sometimes erases ethnicity, and tragedy reaches in and shows that we have hearts and souls and minds that are much alike. We celebrate diversity because we celebrate also the very essence of who we are as individuals, but there's, by celebrating diversity, there's also a celebration of commonality. Because the more we understand other people, the more we see that we're all alike that we are sharing the same hopes and dreams, the same opportunity, the same sense of reaching out, the same sense of really climbing that ladder to success. Every nominee here and every recipient is the testament to the legacy of Dr. King. Every barrier that is broken by a team who stays in school or out of a game, every outreach program provides education, training, and hope, and promotes dignity and inclusion self-respect in every community, community celebration that honors traditional and indigenous cultures is proof positive that Dr. King's dream is alive. So the spirit of Dr. King is filled in this room. And when I look around this room and I see every one of you, and when I see the diversity, I know all is well in City Hall. And I know that we got it right. And that we aren't just talking it, we're walking it and we're living it, and we're breathing it. And if every time we have this celebration, we can say we commit to Dr. King's dream, and we've done more than just dreamed. We've made it a reality. Let's keep celebrating. Let's keep climbing. Let's keep caring, because the opportunity and the challenge is here. But the work that we celebrate is for positives. So thank you for letting me be a part of this celebration. Thank you. Now, <laughs> the first group of individual 
recipients are from City Light. This group of employees has made it more than their business or their jobs to recruit a diverse pool of applicants for engineering positions at City Light. Because of their tireless efforts, female and minority representation in the engineering category has dramatically improved. And those individuals that uh, Megan Queen, Fran Ajima, Martin Habib, Franklin Liu, Jose Lopez, Juana Nishimura, Desiree Schaefer, Betty Tobin, Dorothy Bellin, Darcy Swanson, and Nancy Langdon, the recruitment staff of the City Life Engineering Division. Please accept this platform. Thanks. Am I out of order? <laughs> Thank you. I changed the rules of the game. <laughs> and, and nobody has the guts to take the card away. <laughs> All right. Let's break I'll, I'll go back. Come on down.
The next two individuals are from the finance department. Anthony Franz Cisco uh, for advancing awareness and understanding of diversity issues, initiating a cultural heritage brown bag series, and serving as a mentor to employees. Lois Washington for exemplifying the celebration of unity by valuing individual diversity with unvarnished optimism and rock solid enthusiasm. She is a standard for valuing diversity. group of individuals are from Parks and Recreation. Melanie uh, Chan for Melanie Chan for serving as an outstanding role model for teens as a member of the lifeguard training team and developing new programs that encourage children of color to consider a future in aquatic employment. Michael Garrett Smalls as a 1994 playground leader at the Othello Playground for creating an environment that was inclusive but non-competitive. Although this site is used by a high number of at-risk youth, there were no problems last summer. His approach was creative, positive, and specifically addressed the youth's diversity of cultures. Al Hovland, a custodial services for recruiting and hiring a crew as diverse as Seattle, comprised of Filipinos, Southeast Asians, American Indians, Indian Continent Indians, Latinos from Central and South America, Caribbean, Samoa, Tanzania, African Americans, and Caucasians, it was a regular United Nations. <laughs> Donna Iverson, an excellent leader, supervisor, and advocate for working to increase program availability and facility access for persons with disabilities. Russell Sandberg, for going the extra mile to contribute his time and give a little of himself to the South Park Community Center, especially for children. Fred Verzola as a maintenance crew leader for his commitment and success in hiring and training a developmentally disabled employee. This employee has been a welcome addition to the crews in the department. Kathy Whitman for developing a quality outreach program specifically designed to reach diverse groups. Would those individuals come forward and get there? <laughs> The next two recipients are from the police department. Barbara Henderson for demonstrating leadership in diversity by action and deed. She has worked hard to facilitate greater understanding and communication between colleagues of different races, culture, ages, and genders, and has worked to ensure our diverse citizenry is treated with respect. Terry Johnston for working tirelessly to facilitate culturally sensitive block watch services to residents of Southeast Seattle. She communicates successfully with residents of different cultures, genders, and ages, many of whom speak limited English. Would those individuals come forward? <laughs> the next two recipients are from the Water Department. Charlie Madden for recruiting and hiring minority student interns from the University of Washington's engineering department and giving future engineers real hands-on experience. Catherine Riviera for volunteering to create artwork for the Combined Charities and the Women's Commission. Catherine was a, has a mobility impairment and has learned how to ski and has raised funds for disabled groups by entering bicycle races. With those individuals <laughs> The 
final group of individual recipients are from the administrative services, fire, neighborhoods, and personnel. And I'll read them all. Susan White for keeping the uh, Department of Administrative Services Culturally, Cultural Diversity Task Force focused, active, alive, and viable. You could say she's, in, she's the force behind the force. Kim Favorit as Fire Department Health and Fitness Manager for successfully training and qualifying a record number of women in the pre-employment program, a fitness training program to assist women and minority males to pass the physical agility test necessary to qualify for recruit school. In the past five years, of 40 women who have passed the entrance exam, 35 have been from the pre-employment program. Ron Angeles neighborhoods for his tireless efforts to promote diversity and work with at risk youth from diverse backgrounds. Projects that Ron has worked on include, it's all about respect, health fair, unity project at High Point, Asian Gang Task Force, Neighborhood USA, Youth Fair Chance to name just a few. And Larry Alcantara, personnel, for his leadership as president of FACES, the Filipino American City Employees of Seattle. Larry has worked to break down cultural barriers, worked with youth and gang prevention programs, assisted people of color in employment and job search efforts, and helped found the Alliance of City Employees Organization to foster communication and understanding in the workplace, the city, and the community. Thank you all. Yeah. Are from now on to the certificate for groups. They're scared now. Huh? <laughs> Employees of the customer service lobby for meeting the unique and diverse service needs of customers in creative and sensitive ways, such as taking the time to write notes if the sign language interpreter is not available, adjusting talking speed and voice modulation as needed to communicate clearly. No cookbook here. They tailor the accommodation to meet the customer's needs. All right, Hi, the High Voltage Light, Power, and Pride Committee for sponsoring and organizing the Utilities Annual Recognition Awards. They display no barriers to inclusion, and they base awards on job performance. And this year's recipients were a naturally diverse group, proving again that diversity and excellence go hand in hand. Would you come on up? All right, from City Light. The employees of the customer service lines and the high budget service lines. from the Department of Housing and Human Services. First, the case, management division, the case Management Division on Aging for accommodating a legally blind University of Washington student to do a pract practicum with the Case Management Respite Programs. The Respite Care Program in the Division on Aging for <laughs> applying for and winning a grant to identify and provide respite care to people of color who have Alzheimer's, a service that is sadly all too needed. 